So, if you've been subscribed to any self-respecting DigiTuber, then you would know that the Digivice Color 25th anniversary has been released to the filthy public. Everyone has been uploading their videos on this, and the video tally will only go up from here, especially since the Zen Man has started shipping. Oh. Oh, never mind. That, that's awkward. Okay, so where's mine? Where's the haha -ha funny Digimon guys video? Personally, I've decided to take a skip on this device. Yeah, I'm pulling a James Rolfe when he didn't want to watch Ghostbusters 2016 here. So why is this, I hear you ask? Well, I don't hear you ask, but I'm going to tell you anyways. P is for priceless, the look upon your faces. Before we get into this, let me start by explaining the best Digivice Bandai has ever made, and that is the Digivice Version Complete. The Version Complete, hands down, is the greatest device that money can buy. Sure, when it comes to gameplay, it's just the same as the original Digivices. However, it's a lot more than that, featuring content from Adventure, Adventure Try, R War Games, and Last Evolution. Bandai has really given us our money's worth here when it comes to content. Plus, it includes nearly every Digimon that's appeared in the series, minus Pegasusmon and a 30mon, of course. Literally, my only complaint about the version complete was the fact that it was missing Adventure Zero 02 content. Which I know is a weird complaint to have, but then you remember that the original Digi Destin had key roles in O2, so shut up. Is it a little unfair to compare the 25th and the version complete? No, not really, especially given the time frame between releases. With all that out of the way, let me start with what I love about the 25th device. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> Unfortunately, what I love about the 25th Digivice is very surface level. I love that we have a backlit colour screen. I know some people would rather see the return of the sprites from the classic Digivice, but personally it never really bothered me that we went with the Vital Bracelet sprites. And it makes a lot of sense as well, since Bandai already has the assets for fully coloured and expressive sprites. Except Palmon. What the fuck did they do to you? Blink twice if you need the police. Plus, a big reason why I think they went with the Vital Bracelet sprites, at least according to my tinfoil hat conspiracy, is because of the human characters. They match up lovely with the vital sprites that we have in this device. Especially considering that they have weave dims, so they could have used those as a base for the human characters in this device. To add on to the presentation, the backgrounds they use for walking around and the parallax scrolling that they have going on is fucking beautiful and belongs in a museum. Also, big plus, rechargeable battery. I seriously hope we never return to the button batteries with Digimon. The future is here, the future is now, and the future is USB-C charging. However, a lot of my praise ends here. I do love the fact that we have a feature that we can toggle on and off to change one step into five. What a fucking amazing idea. But that's about it, really. The only other thing that I like about this device leads me to my first criticism, however. You're a colorful bunch. One of the biggest new features was the LED light-up gimmick. The device will light up eight different colors depending on who you're using, and it looks fucking amazing on the standard device. But only on the standard device. How about the premium edition? Why the fuck would they do this? If you're unaware, Bandai released three versions of this device. One with the standard default Digivice, and then two more colors based off Matt and Ty's Digivices when they light up in the show but they didn't remove the LED feature from the premiums. Of course, why would they? They honestly should have removed it, because it looks fucking trash on the premiums. The trans orange and blue shells mute the LEDs so bad that it's not even worth it. The premiums were such a fucking waste of money that they had to throw in a crest box. Let me get into this one. First, it's just the OG-8. Which sucks when you consider the fact that you can go online and get a set that contains the Crest of Miracles, Destiny and Kindness, and they have the whole slide in Crest feature. And to add on to this, no light up feature? I know it was never advertised that these Crests would light up, but how fucking cool would it have been to throw a little LED into that tag and then you press a button and it lights up? But come on Jordan, surely a Crest box and a different color Digivice can't be it for the premium edition. Surely you get more. Oh, you do. But this leads on to my next problem. Hi, kids. Welcome to Camp Krusty. <laughs> I'll see you in a few weeks. Until then, I've turned things over to my bestest buddy in the whole wide world. Mr. Black. I want you to treat 
Mr. Black. With the same respect you would give me. Now here's Mr. Black. Camping was such a letdown. When I first saw it, Bandai made it look like we'd be having more interaction with the Digimon and the humans, running around and playing some minigames, taking a break from the battling. However, it's far from it. You have three scenes that you can switch between. Sleeping by a campfire, a running one, and eating. Then you can sub out an item for what you find during the adventure. That's it? Yeah, that's it. No interaction, no quick time events, nothing. This could have been such an amazing feature, finding things along the adventure and then bringing them back to unlock minigames. What an amazing idea! And it's not like these digivices are strangers to minigames. Just look at the original English releases, for example. Each one had a basic yet playable minigame to pass the time and get closer to the goal. Uh, by the way, shout out to the D-Arc minigame. Sunk so many fucking hours into this shit, I, it's, it's insane. Oh, by the way, in case it wasn't obvious, on the premium editions, you get special items just for camping mode. Oh wow. Oh wow. Camping was such a bust. But how about the main feature? How about battling? Oh boy. And it's our duty to destroy the village to avenge our clan. No, Jumkashi! I will not betray my village like you did! I will fight to protect it! Then fight we shall do! Part of the reason why I love the original Digivices was the quest. You have a big bad at the end of your journey, but you could find events and surprises along your trip, such as new friends or a wild battle. The Digivice color streamlines this. Now, instead of having one area, you have one area, but it's broken into zones like Sonic the Hedgehog. There are no wild encounters, and the zones just end with either a boss or a cutscene. Let me start with the cutscenes, and they are rough to say the least. It's just a close-up of one of the characters. Pause, close-up of your character. Pause, close-up of the other character. The end. That's it? All these really do are unlock items for the already lackluster camping mode. These cutscenes don't really add anything of value as well, as you already start with all seven of the original Digi Destin unlocked from the beginning. So let's move on and talk about the battle mode. There are three types of battles within this device, which is fucking amazing. One is a shakedown, similar to the English Digivices, a button mash, which is similar to the Japanese versions, or a Simon Says minigame, which I believe is new to the series, I'm not fucking researching. This is fucking awesome. It spices up something that could have been a real autopilot experience. However, my biggest gripe is the fact that you cannot select which mode you want to play. It's all dictated by Bandai and what they feel like putting in at that particular battle. I like being able to approach an enemy with different strategies. This is why I've done things such as Colosseum runs on the DM20 or the Pendulum Z in the past. It would have been such an easy slam dunk for me if we had the option to choose which battle mode we want, but one option is stronger against a particular enemy. It would have given us so much control and customization for something on paper is really simple. Keep in mind, I still haven't even gotten into the meat of the battles. The first thing that will pop up when starting a battle is which evolution you would want to use. And do you see that red box? That tells you that if you select this Digimon, you're gonna automatically lose. You don't even get the option to try. It's just an automatic loss. Why the fuck would you do this? It makes no sense. Sure, I know if I fight Piedmon with a Patamon, I'm fucked and that's my fault. But at least make me think I have a chance here. This wouldn't bother me as much if it wasn't for the fucking background music. Yes, I have to talk about background music on this device. It's all from the original anime, which is cool. However, Braveheart gets really annoying after hearing it back to back for every single battle. It sucks for me because I particularly like the conflict theme. It actually goes pretty hard. Then I have to say goodbye to this song that I like just to hear a song that's burnt in my head thanks to Digimon Adventure Tries evolution scenes. Yes, I am aware I can mute the device. However, as someone who unironically loves listening to the beeps and boops of the virtual pets, 
it's such a downgrade from the original. Because it's not just the music that gets annoying. It's also hearing the same soundbite for an attack over and over. Yes, I know you use an attack called Holy Arrow, Angel Woman. Now, can you keep quiet so I can enjoy Braveheart for the 25th time today? No? Typical women. Also, let me put a note on this as well. When I say mute the device, it's an overall mute. There's no option to remove the voice or the music. Besides that, there isn't much left to say about the battle mode. It pretty much plays out similarly to the original experience, minus the option to evolve between turns or tag in another partner. You're stuck with whoever you enter the battle with first. However, there is a chance that some other Digimon will tag in to help you on your current fight. This can be from one of the Digi Destin, or a boss that you've encountered in a previous area, which is a very fine addition, but it's not really that interesting to talk about. So let's go on and talk about my biggest complaint about this device. You should have gone for the head. This device only features events from the original adventure and our war games. This wouldn't be a massive problem to me if it wasn't for the fact that they cut the missing megas. A Digimon Adventure device from the Year of Our Lord 2024 and they just have War Greymon and Metal Karurumon? I know what you're going to say, but the missing megas don't have Warp Digivolution animations for the cutscenes, so they can't be on this device. And to that I say, Digimon Adventure PSP. I wouldn't have cared if they reused the PSP animations, because I love how accurate those were to the original animation. The missing megas are such a letdown as well, because there's another problem that only would bother the most diehard Digi fans. As some of you might know, the colour series of V-Pets will not connect to any BC era Digimon. Uh, BC era being before colour. Why would Bandai do this? I don't know. Part of Digimon V-Pets appeal to me was having the newest Digivice, but you may only having one of the older devices like a DM3. But regardless of how much time has passed, you could still fight them. Removing backwards compatibility was such a mistake on Bandai's end when it came to the colour transition. Unfortunately, the connection issues extend into the Digivice colour as well. Which makes less sense to me why it doesn't. Because one of the key features of the Color Virtual Pet series is trading backgrounds. But you don't unlock any backgrounds on your B pets or the Digivice Color. Keep in mind the Wave 2 of the Pendulum Colors have not released yet. So I actually don't know if they will actually unlock something from this device. But it seems very unlikely given that the original Wave of the Pendulum Colors don't have anything. Having the missing Megas means you have less Digimon in this modern era to fight with friends. This isn't really a problem given that you can raise most of the missing megas on the pendulum colors. Except for Patamon. Patamon is the only one who doesn't have his Mega Seraphimon on any of the virtual pets at the moment. And I guess if you're a brainlet and you think Gatomon's Mega is Ophanimon, then you can include her as well. For whatever reason, the Virus Buster's pendulum color cut Seraphimon for Dominiumon, a Digimon so fucking irrelevant that I didn't know existed until I heard Flirp talk about him and used this quote. A Dominimon is a weird Digimon and that he hasn't appeared on literally any device. He hasn't appeared in any media besides a V Tamer, which is a manga. Um, and he doesn't even have a reference book entry. So hopefully we see him sometime in the future. He's basically like a powered down version of Seraphimon. Yeah, a powered down Seraphimon. Yes, I am aware that you can mod these devices, but so many people don't have the knowledge base to do this. I understand that this point comes off as the biggest nitpick of this video, but fuck off. This is my video. Make your own. But that's it. Ultimately, I am very glad that we got this Digivice and the color series continues, but I thought I would share my thoughts and reasonings why I'm going to skip this particular entry. Unless someone wants to send it to me, ooh woo.